Hello everyone, welcome back to the Spec Guide. I'm Max and I'm standing in the rain today in Boulder, Colorado at a uh, what's called a Fermata Energy Charger to talk about an interesting topic, a feature the Nissan LEAF has that believe it or not, no other modern electric vehicle really in the US, including Tesla's, have. It is basically vehicle to grid um, functionality. Now, what does that mean? Why is it something only the LEAF has? And how is it being used? How might we see it come about in the future? Maybe not just on the LEAF's CHADMO connector, but on other kinds of connectors we see, like on the Tesla North American charging standard many cars are adopting now. What does this mean for all of us in the future? I think it's a super relevant topic. I don't see covered a lot at all in automotive media. So I thought I'd share some details with you with this interesting installation, so stay tuned. bat here. Fermata Energy is a company that uh, I've recently discovered. Or I just came across here. This is the uh, North Boulder Rec Center. I go here to work out a lot and I noticed this leaf was charged here uh, and I thought, oh, it's just a typical Nissan leaf owner leaves their car plugging all the time. SMH. Then I actually bothered to read the sign and I saw that this is a part of a pilot project for electrical vehicle to building. Uh, but we commonly, this there's a terminology the industry is like to use called vehicle to grid V2G. Uh, what this means is basically taking the large battery in an electric car and using that to give energy back to the grid. The same way you might if you install solar in your home and you have your solar panels providing direct current back to your power company, maybe providing you a discount on your bill, potentially if it's enough power giving you, well, a zero cost electric bill. So the idea with electric cars is this, this is going to help consumers, obviously, because, well, you'll be able to maybe have a cheaper power bill. And the reason it'll help consumers is because utilities are going to incentivize it because they will be able to use the large batteries in electric cars because even a Nissan LEAF, which has a small battery relative to other EVs, that's still a lot of, you know, 40 kilowatt hour potential pack in there, a lot of battery, uh, they can use that to level out their grid uh, while there's, you know, on peak, off peak hours, everyone plugs in at certain times, uses appliances in their homes. Uh, at certain times, there's high demand on the power grid, high stress. Electric cars, of course, are part of that demand, but they can be part of the solution with something like vehicle to grid. So let's go over and see exactly what's going on with the Leaf here. So the Leaf is not plugged into this charge point stall, which is Tesla is, by the way. Um, it's plugged into this Fermata Energy unit. And you can see it's using the Leaf's CHAdeMO connector. So CHAdeMO, just to recap for those of you who may not know, CHAdeMO stands for basically, I think, a cup of tea in Japanese. It's a cute term that refers to about the time it should take to DC fast charge. It's kind of an obsolete standard, to be honest, in the US. The only vehicles with it are the Nissan LEAF and the Mitsubishi Outlander plug-in hybrid. But by virtue of using CHAdeMO, both of these are the only official vehicles that have vehicle-to-grid functionality, hooking up into what we know is this Fermata Energy box. And Fermata Energy, their story is really interesting when I looked into them. They're based in Charlottesville, Virginia, where I actually went to school. So that was a really cool coincidence. And they have very few installations across the country, some in New York, and as it turns out, some here in Boulder, Colorado. So what these are doing is basically acting both as a charger for the vehicle. So of course it can charge the leaf, but of course it's bi-directional. That's what's enabling vehicle to grid. So 15 kilowatts continuously, theoretically, I think, with this unit, can be pulled from the LEAF, put back into the grid, or in this case, back into the building, I guess, charge up the rec center. The idea being that this LEAF is like a big battery reservoir for the rec center or any building or infrastructure it's plugged into, providing, you know, kind of almost like a being a super capacitor or some kind of basically big load, um, big store of energy. Stores of energy are super useful for power companies because they help level out those on and off peak scenarios, help stabilize the grid. This is again how electric cars can not only be part of the demand problem, but also part of the solution for actually improving power grids across the country. So vehicle to grid, super promising technology, Question is, why have we not seen it adopted on Tesla's, other popular electric vehicles? Why has it seemingly been restricted to CHAdeMO? Well, I don't entirely know. To be honest, the certification process for this is very complicated for reasons you can probably imagine. Um, it's actually been fairly easy for several years now for many cars like the Hyundai Ioniq 5 to do vehicle to load, where they just take some of their power and apply it to like a 120 volt AC outlet. The Ford F-150 Lightning does this. It can actually even power homes. That's doable because it's uh, easy endpoints, right? You understand you have a load, you have a home you need charging, etc. 
um, they can do it. I'll put in some pictures here of the Ford set up with the F-150 Lightning and the uh, Hyundai Ioniq 5 vehicle to load adapter. That's not what I'm talking about with the vehicle to grid here because vehicle to grid requires certification to work with the power grid. It's kind of complicated to be honest because if you have a situation where there's a grid outage, you want safety uh, for everything that's plugged into it, including that car appliance. So. It's complicated. And um, Charan, the organization that oversees a lot of electrical vehicle standards, actually has a certification process in place for CCS. CCS being that charging port you see in cars like my Polestar 2 and most electric cars that aren't Teslas on the road currently. Um, they said they were gonna get this done by 2025. But of course, with current news in the last few weeks, we've seen that the Tesla North American charging standard has taken off in terms of adoption. Already Ford and General Motors have said they'll buy in and their future vehicles will have a Tesla port. Presumably they won't have CCS. So the question is, can Tesla do it? Well, theoretically, the North American charging standard, the spec that Tesla opened up, does support vehicle to grid, or at least it supports bi-directional output. They didn't really specify vehicle to grid, they said vehicle to X, X standing in for potentially load, like we see in those situations where you have an inverter that can power appliances, or vehicle to home and maybe hopefully vehicle to grid, that situation where your electric car can be like solar panels or something, it can be a direct current, right? Um, output back into the grid. Uh, the hardware in many cars is here. Like I said, F-150 Lightning and Ionic 5 have both, of course, a rectifier. All cars have a rectifier. That's how they charge from the alternating current grid to their direct current batteries. But we need that inverter piece to turn the direct current back into alternating current, and a lot of them do, but you need a very high power inverter to do something like what this LEAF is doing with a 15 kilowatt output. And that's been one of the interesting peculiarities of the CHAdeMO connector and the implementation with the Nissan LEAF. So for Mata Energy, what they're doing is super interesting. I'd honestly love to hear more about them. I actually reached out to them, have not gotten a response as of now, but I really would love to talk about what they're doing, see if that work can be applied to the Tesla North American charging standard as well. I know it's already, they're trying to apply it towards the combined charging system, CCS vehicles. I'm not sure which vehicle specifically, but I, I, you know, I'm sure they don't want their technology to die on the vine with Chatmo because in the U.S. we are seemingly going in different directions for charging. I'm super interested in the vehicle to grid topic. This has been kind of just a general brief explainer um, overview of it. What do you think is the potential of it? Do you already use vehicle to load maybe in your Ionic Five or your other vehicle? Do you find uses for that? Um, if because you know you can you've been able to plug stuff into like USB outputs in cars before, of course the classic 12 volt cigarette lighter. But having higher power, even vehicle to load applications like you know a 120 volt three prong outlet in your Ionic, I think that's been super cool. People seem to be using that for lots of cool camping, outdoor activities, using their cars for more kind of versatile use cases like that. Can it save the grid? Can we use it in this way? What do you think? Let me know if you have any knowledge of this or if you're one of these people with a Nissan Leaf and the Fermata Energy Charger, let me know. They're not the only ones, by the way, who make this. Um, there's another company called Wallbox who makes a product called the uh, Quasar, I believe, that has bi-directional capability. It's not quite as powerful as this 15 kilowatt bi-directional unit, but it does exist. And then, um, Emporia, lovely company based in Colorado who makes great normal home chargers, also makes a V2X bi-directional charger. I don't believe it's on the market yet. They say it's coming sometime next year. Emporia, if you're watching this, let's get in touch. I'm gonna reach out to them actually. Would love to talk to them to see about how that development's going. But that's been a brief introduction to vehicle to grid, all that entails. Hope that's been helpful. Hope it helps stimulate your mind and think about other cool ways we can use electric cars even when we're not driving them. And yeah. I'm just gonna let this leaf chill here and I'll see you in the next one.